It's been a while. I'm happy that you're back. So today we're going to discuss an interesting technique for dealing with inequalities. And it's not a technique that's talked about a lot, but it's cool and it's sort of inherited from looking at the geometry of curves coming from the type of thing that you're trying to establish. So today we're going to focus on this one problem to illustrate how to use what's called the tangent trick. The problem is let A, B, C, D be positive real numbers whose sum is 1 and you want to prove that 6 times the sum of the cubes of the numbers is greater than or equal to the sum of the squares plus an eighth. Now if you look at this inequality it's kind of weird like the sum of the cubes you'd think the cubes are like much much larger than the squares but these numbers because they're positive and they sum to 1 they have to be between 0 and 1. So the cubes in general are actually smaller than the squares. Um, so it's kind of interesting that you have an, inequal an inequality in this direction. And what the tangent trick is going to do is allow us to look at this from the perspective of drawing the curve and drawing a tangent line that goes below the curve to establish some type of inequality for the expression um, on the left we're going to augment it a little bit um, to be able to get the, the inequality that we're desiring here. Um, so let's take a look at the given problem and then we're going to see um, in, later on in the video another problem and discuss the general strategy for, stra gener and discuss the general strategy for it. But I'm going to let you work on that second problem and leave your thoughts about how to go about the details in the comments in the video. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and actually try to establish this inequality here that we have at hand. So the first thing we ought to do is try to sort of manipulate this so that all of the variables involved happen to be in one side. And so then we can sort of manipulate the algebraic expressions and not worry about what's going on with the actual constants. And this is a general strategy when you have constants that are isolated in inequalities in general. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is take the sum of the squares and move them to the left-hand side. All right, so if we do that, we're summing over all the variables, so we'll write that as a sum over x, of the quantity 6x cubed minus x squared, and we're trying to establish that that's at least one eighth. All right, um, so what we can do then is think about this function, six x cubed minus x squared, and we're gonna graph that as a function of x. Okay, so uh, since our variables are between zero and one, we'll graph in the interval between zero and one. And if you play around and try to sketch the curve, it'll look something like this. Now, equality is likely to occur when all the variables are a fourth because of the symmetry involved here. So what we'll do is take a look at the tangent line to the curve at the value of x when x is a fourth. Okay, so we can actually compute what this tangent line is using derivatives. So we'll differentiate our function 6x cubed minus x squared. We get 18x squared minus uh, 2x. All right, so if we do that and plug in our value of a fourth, we'll get 18 sixths minus a half, um, which simplifies to 5 eighths. So write that down. All right, um, so that's the slope of the tangent, uh, and we can explicitly find out the equation of the tangent line using typical uh, calculus approaches, and if you do that in this particular case, you get that the tangent line is uh, 5x minus 1, y equals 5x minus 1, all over 8. Okay, so from the graph and the tangent line, we see that the expression 6x cubed minus x squared has to actually dominate the expression 5x minus 1 over 8 in the interval 0, 1. Okay, but the thing is, we use calculus to do this, and a lot of times you want to have an elementary proof for this. So we're going to move the 8 over to the other side, rearrange, and try to prove that this inequality holds without using calculus. And if we do that, we're trying to prove that 4, 
48x cubed minus 8x squared minus 5x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. Now, we got this inequality from the fact that there was a tangent at x equals a fourth. And so there's a cool consequence of that. If you have a tangent at x equals a fourth, you actually will be forced to get 4x minus 1 as a factor of the expression at the left. And this has to do with um, something called double roots. And I'll make a video about this a little bit later. So we'll try to factor this expression 4x minus 1 out of the cubic on the left. And if we do that, sort of comparing terms, we'll get 12x squared plus x minus 1. And we can factor that further to 4x minus 1 times the quantity 3x plus 1. So we have a quantity that's 4x minus 1 squared in the factorization. That's greater than or equal to 0. And then 3x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 0 on the interval 0, 1. So this entire expression is going to be greater than or equal to 0. So we do have our inequality that we wanted in the first place. OK, awesome. So let's actually use that in the expression we had for our general aimed inequality. So we get that the sum over all the variables of 6x cubed minus x squared is at least the sum over all the variables of 5x minus 1 over 8. We can pull the 5 eighths out. We have a negative 1 eighth four times. And the sum of all the variables is 1 that was given. So this expression here is actually bounded below by 1 eighth. All right. So that's actually really fantastic for us. Um, we have exactly what we wanted, which is that the sum over all the variables of this quantity is at least an eighth. OK, so um, let's try this technique again on a different problem. So in this problem, we have variables a, b, c. They're positive real numbers. And we want to show that the expression on the left is at most 8. All right, so here, unfortunately, we don't have that the sum of the variables is 1. But we have that this is a homogeneous quadratic on the left in the numerators and denominators. So we can scale by replacing variables. We'll let x be a over a plus b plus c, and y and z take on similar things. And so that in that case, the sum of the variables x, y, and z is 1. So if we rewrite our actual expression on the left, we get the sum over all variables of, now two, the 2a two plus b plus c will be homogenized to 2x plus y plus z, which then turns into 1 plus x. And then we have that all squared. Um, then in the denominator, we'll have 2x squared, and then plus the quantity 1 minus x all squared. All right. So this is the expression that we want to prove is bounded above by 8. So we'll call this function that we're summing over f of x. And our goal then is to use the tangent tricks somehow. So we'll have to compute the tangent at wherever the symmetrized point is. We have three variables here. So it makes sense that the, the equality is probably going to hold when x, um, all the variables are a third. And so our question is, when we take the tangent line at a third of this expression f of x, what will we actually get in terms of inequalities? We may get upper bounds, lower bounds, um, and we can try to use those then to establish the equality at hand, similar to our approach that we did in the previous problem. So I want you to give this a try. Actually, leave your thoughts in the comments about how you'd go about this particular problem um, and uh, if you flush out to a full solution, definitely share it. So I hope you enjoyed this video today about the tangent trick and its use to, use to solve inequalities. Um, definitely a very, very handy tool for establishing inequalities in general. If you liked the video, definitely click the like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, definitely subscribe to the channel.